Wow, 707 bucks to fill this thing up. Is the game simulating today's actual gas prices? <laughs> oh man, if it was, it'd be a lot more now, huh? Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming and uh, bring you back for an update here at the end of April. Uh, I got to thinking about how I want to move forward over the next few months. And rather than go through several months uh, without bringing you guys back at all, I think what I'm going to do instead is bring you, like, end-of-the-month updates and maybe, you know, multiple multiple updates in like a single episode so that way you you know we can all still kind of stay current as to what's going on um uh, i don't think i got those bottom pallets i uh, know i i don't have the top two okay what about okay there we go okay i think that's all of them there we go. Okay, yeah, you just have to try it a couple times. I, I should have actually had the hooks a little closer uh, to the pallet also. Uh, but anyway, I am in the process here of uh, moving our produce into the cold storage at the end of the month. Uh, as you can see, it is April 3rd. We have $105,317. Uh, that money came from doing contracts. And uh, like we did the last time, I'll kind of I'll go through the ledger with you so you guys can all see where the money went uh, but yeah but what I figured we would do is we would uh, I just give you you know end of the month updates until I'm ready to do another full episode for you guys uh, and that way you know I, I think that's a good compromise so we can kind of stay everybody can stay up to date with what's going on and and whatnot so um, we're just just about done with the, the second load in here with the cold storage you know, I'm, I'm going th three wide, but I almost wonder if I should go four wide so then I don't have to do this split up thing that I've been doing. If we did that, though, what would we do with the eggs? I, I, I want to make sure there's plenty of room in between each stack because these pallets are just, you know, janky as all get out. Uh... I don't know. I'll think about that. I'll give that some more thought and see if I want to change it. But I guess if I am going to change it, I need to do it fairly soon before I, I keep loading stuff in so I don't have to re-move. Okay. Did that get everything? It looks like it did. Nice. Yeah, this is such a slick way of moving multiple pallets at a time in a stable manner. That's a key thing here. Uh, stable meaning the pallets aren't shifting because the straps keep them from going, you know, all over the place. Whereas if I picked all this this much up on some forks, they'd start shifting and going crazy. Um, so yeah, I really like the way this is working out. So what we'll do is we'll pop these in here. And then we'll grab these and pull them forward. should be finished with the telehandler so let's go park that uh, we also need to or I rather also need to fill up the greenhouses with water and with our new setup it's pretty slick how that works it doesn't cost us anything but time okay so we'll park you I need to get my curtain side back in its spot there but let's finish this up first Okay, so we're going to put the front two rows 
up on top of the back too. Hopefully we can do this, keep everything reasonably stable. Yeah, let's push everything back first. Oh, lordy. <laughs> okay, hold on. Get back on there. Yeah, they are really squirrely, man. Yeah, we're going to lose this one. Well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, we just have to use super strength to, to make it all go. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, let me uh, let me get this fixed up here, and then we'll we'll go over where we're at. Okay, let's try it with this stack and see if we can get this one to behave at least. I think part of the problem is, you know, when you get other stuff stacked around, the game is, you know, trying to calculate this, uh, you know, the uh, the physics is what I'm trying to say. And it's all, so when, the more stuff you have around it, the more stuff it has to take into account. And I think it, that's partly why this just gets really squirrely. One thing I'm thinking about doing is rather than trying to stack this stuff so high because it takes a lot of time to do this, is just buy another cold storage. I don't I don't think they're I think they're only 40 grand, which is, you know, definitely affordable. It's kind of almost more where would we put it? And then I don't then I just put them the stacks in as they come off the truck and not even mess around with this. It would just make things so much faster you know, for an investment of only 40,000 more dollars, which is, I mean, it's a lot of money, but in the long run, it might be worth it for us to do. Let's see if we can shove this back a little more. There's probably stuff in behind it that's preventing it from going back. I guess when I planned all this out, I didn't really realize how just how much product <laughs> we have here oh it's it, it's a nice problem to have for sure okay that wraps up the cold storage loading for today uh for this month actually let's hop on out of here and close the door it's, we're losing refrigeration and let's turn these lights off. This, this thing can be a little bit weird sometimes. There we go. And then to close the door, we actually have to hit that thing there to get it to close right. It took me a while to figure that one out. Okay, so let's see. What has happened April 3rd uh, or in April? We, uh, I did contracts, so I did the typical, you know, farmer hay contracts that come out first cutting of the year. I did some sowing contracts and a bunch of fertilizer contracts, and that's where all of that money came from. Um, we loaded our own bales into the store, the round storage here, and then I also got quite a few more bales left over, um, over a full trailer load. Uh, you know, a bale pickup loader, so that's 24. I know we probably got somewhere around 30 more bales, I think, from the contracts, uh, in addition to a few that I, I sold uh, because I took too many, you know, back to, to finish the contract, which is fine. I mean, we got the money for it. And I got about, uh, this is about, about 17 more, I think, uh, square bales of hay bales, too, from the contracts and put those in the barn, and those we're just going to sit on until it's time to get our cattle. And so, yeah, that brings this storage up to 532,000 liters and change. Um, we have more uh, 
silage stored in this storage unit than that whole entire smaller round one could hold that we used to use, which is really nice. Uh, and we will be, I don't know if we'll completely fill this up by the end of the year, but we are definitely uh, going to put a lot more silage in there. So that, that uh, took place there. Uh, not really anything. I should, I need to work on this some more. This is really rough, but um, this whole area is going to be transformed into production eventually. So I'm just kind of making do with it for now, I suppose. Uh, I don't think there's anything out in the fields to show you right now. So yeah, let's take a look at our, at the ledger uh, for April. We'll get back to the farm. And I also need to, to get, uh, like I said, get the greenhouses filled back up with water. Uh, this is where, oh, this is what's in the sales, by the way. So there is a kind of a nice uh, New Holland combine, but that's just not a high priority for us right now, as nice as that would be to have. And then there's a little Massey Ferguson, you know, a small square baler too, which also is not something we need. Uh, but if we look at um, here, excuse me, we can see the chickens are good on food and we have more, we still have almost two more loads of barley. Yeah, yeah, in in the train station. Um, there's almost two more full loads. So we're we're doing really good on chicken feed. We're not gonna need any more chicken feed for the whole rest of this year and then some, which is great. However, that you know, we're still gonna take any harvesting contracts that come up, bigger ones anyways, that will give us, you know, chicken feed. So that's basically wheat, barley, or sorghum. All right, so let's look at uh, our greenhouses. So you can see we're getting low on water. We're still doing very well on seeds and fertilizer. Um, I th I think I think we're going to be able to go approximately ten months, maybe, before we have to start worrying about refilling that, which is actually pretty good. Uh, but of course, the water is low, so that so I'm going to fill all of those back up with water. All right, let's take a look at the ledger for April. So, uh, oh, I, that's what I was going to show you. I purchased two more of those John Deere direct drills, direct seeders, um, because the equipment that they gave me on the biggest sewing contract still, uh, in terms of, you know, width of the seeder, still pretty narrow. So I said, forget this, man. I'm just going to, I wanted to buy two more of these anyway, so they're very inexpensive. These are mods, by the way. And so I bought two more of those. And, you know, when you hook all three of them up and you extend out these arms, uh, you cover a huge, huge swath. Uh, and it just saves a ton of time. I really, really like these implements. So that's where that $1,200 came from there. Uh, 66 for construction costs. I had a little spot that I had uh, messed up a long, long time ago on field 58. That, that's the one across the road from the shop. And so I just fixed that. So that's what that came from. Vehicle running costs. That's just uh, repairs that we'd had to do this month. Property maintenance is property maintenance. Production costs are production costs. Uh, these uh, were some of the extra bales from the contract that I dumped off when I was finishing it that I sold. I overestimated how many they needed, but we got the money for it, so that's fine. Uh, this is what we have paid for in fuel. This is our total gross income from the contracts, $114,578. It's really good. This is what we paid workers. This is the fee that we have to pay the, um, uh, the train station to store the barley. Oh, you know what else? We also need to um, pay our worker for this month, too. Um, and then, yeah, so let's do that right now. So we're going to take out 1200 bucks to pay our part-time worker. And then that should come out of miscellaneous too, which it did there. Okay. So that leaves us at a balance of $104,117. We made a profit of $101,537. And remember, we still have those extra bales that we're sitting on. So we really, if you count that, we made quite a bit more money too. Uh, but that will come at the end of the year. Okay, so yeah, that pretty much gets us caught up, you guys, on where we are for April. And so, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the camera here. I'm gonna go through uh, May, and then I'll bring you back again uh, for an end of May update. And you know, we may end up doing these kind of these episodes where we have two to three, four, maybe monthly updates until I get to the point where I'm ready to do another full episode. But that way, you know, again, I'm not passing several months without you guys knowing exactly what's going on. Uh, and I think that's a good compromise. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to park this, go get the tank tanker, fill it up with water, fill up the greenhouses, and then sleep on into May and go from there. So I'll bring you guys back uh, next month with a May update. See you in a bit. Well, actually in a month. 
All right, guys, we are back. It's May the 3rd, and I've got a headache. <laughs> Uh, the reason I have a headache is I'm really starting to have some some performance issues with all these pallets in here. Um, I'm gonna see, let's see if I can show you what's going on here. Uh, when I get into these pallets and start lifting them up, uh, yeah, see how things just start stuttering like crazy? Um, and that's just really wigging me out here. I also realized, too, in the... Uh, in April when I was doing this I shouldn't have grabbed um, 12 at a time I should have done 6 at a time but I was thinking I could do 12 for some reason see how they're shifting everything is just really the more pallets I oh man serious stuttering there the more pallets I put in here the worse it gets um, things just get unstable you know the computer's like choking on trying to figure out how to do you know process all this and uh, so I think we're going to have to, unfortunately, come up with a better... Oh, man. Yeah, that just really messes with <laughs> messes with me. Um, we're going to have to come up with a better way to do this. And so I have an idea on what that better way might be. I mean, even if I did somehow manage to get this place completely filled up, stacking like I am, I, it's... <sighs> The frame rate in here is so terrible at times. Not, I mean, right now it's perfect, but at other times it just goes really bad. I've noticed, too, that if I'm out in a field and then I'm driving back and I start look, getting closer to the farm, you know, things start getting weirder, and, and I'm almost sure it's because of these pallets. So, um, I have an idea for how we're going to deal with this. Let's, uh, here, let's get the rest of these strawberries back over here. I haven't fully thought this, you know, my idea through yet, but I'll give you, I'll show you, see how, yeah, see how laggy it is in here? It's terrible. It's almost like as if, see, now it's fine. You know, normal smooth frame rate, whatever that is. I know there's a, supposed to be a way I can bring that up, but... It, but as soon as I pick up a pallet and start moving towards here, it starts to get, yeah, it starts to stutter like crazy because I think what's happening is the computer is trying to calculate the physics of this pallet in relation to all the other pallets around it. And it's just really, you know, really tanking things frame rate wise and whatnot. So yeah, we, we can't keep doing things this way, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. Because it's it's just a neat, I felt like it was just a really neat way to do this. But, you know, if the game can't really handle it, the game can't really handle it. So, here's what I, I'm thinking. Let's put those over there for the moment. Um, I'm just going to close this for now, too. Because I've got all the lettuce to do as well. Uh, and <laughs> once we get all that lettuce in there... It's got to be just, it's just going to get worse and worse. That's really what it boils down to. So there is in, um, there's a mod that I actually installed and I was thinking about using it for, you know, our original upgrade, farm upgrade, but I decided not to, but we might have to go back to it. And that's this mod here. Okay. So this is called the pallet storage and logistics mod. And basically what this does is this allows you to, to store any pallet, uh, pretty much any pallet in the game, any kind of production in the game inside this warehouse. But the thing about it is it's automagic, which is good and bad. Um, it's bad because it's automatic. I mean, it. I, I, can, I can tell my greenhouses to distribute directly to this, and I'm not moving anything at all. Um, and the way that I would cover that is through paying a worker. I, we Maybe our, our part-time worker would become a full-time worker and we'd pay more money. You know, that sort of thing. But the good thing about this is the pallets go in and then it's just recording the number of pallets. The actual, <clears throat> we'll say, quote-unquote, physical uh, pallet is not uh, not actually there. So if I stored 100 pallets in here, there isn't actually 100 pallets in there that the processor of the game has to keep track of like there is in our cold storage. Um, but it's just, 
records that there's a hundred pallets in there. And then when it come when the time comes for us to uh, take everything to market, <clears throat> I, I can have it spit those pallets out and I can load them up. And this is going to be way better uh, on the, on the computer, on the processor, on a sm on smooth gameplay. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, what we could do is we could keep. We could keep the cold storage here anyway and pretend like this building is actually the cold storage. Um, we could do that or we could we could get rid of the cold storage and just put this building down and just say that this is cold storage because it could be, um, you know, it definitely could be cold storage. We could just say that it is and not think too hard, <laughs> think too hard about it. Um, and it costs fifty thousand dollars, so it's not super super expensive. But um, I mean, this, like I said, for performance reasons, if nothing else, this is just not going to work. Um, it's just not going to work because it's just getting, like I said, worse and worse. So what I guess I could do is I could try and <clears throat> excuse me, I could try and move the rest of the lettuce in here without stacking it. I'm just going to put it in as it comes off the truck. And then maybe not put anything else in here afterwards and find a spot for this new building. Now, the ideal spot for this new building, if I keep the cold storage, is right here. Which means we ha we we're going to need to move our chickens. And so I'll probably role play that in so that I'll, I'll have um, uh, Delbert's... What is it? Delbert's Demolition and Construction Service come out and move the building for us, and I and I'll just pay, you know, Delbert a, a fee for that, rather than lose half the money that you normally would lose by demolishing that and putting a new one in, <clears throat> which is how the game does it. Um, so you know that's an option too, and I thought about maybe putting the chicken coop right here. We'd have to remove some trees so we could push it back far enough. Uh, you know, I do use this area to back the the truck in to the greenhouse. You know, to pick up the the produce and stuff. So I wouldn't want to completely block this area off. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. And then what I can do is I can set up these greenhouses to just automatically distribute or put the product into this new warehouse and that way I'm not actually moving all the pallets but what I will do is I will hire our part-time worker as a full-time worker and just you know pay him what are we paying 12,000 or 1200 a month we pay him 2400 a month at 15 bucks an hour um, cause he, you know, he's just a young, young high school kid kind of thing. Well, I guess he can't be full-time if he's high school. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure that out, uh, to simulate, you know, somebody else doing that work because I don't, I don't want it to just happen magically without having to pay for it. Cause that's just not realistic. Okay. So that's kind of what I think, uh, I think we need to do. I'm going to try, uh, this might be a really bad idea. In fact, it might be such a bad idea that I'm going to actually back up the game files first um so that way if things really just go absolutely nutso with me moving the rest of lettuce in here you know we can start over but after i get this load of lettuce in here i'm not i'm not going to put anything else in here it's just because it's already too much um so i think that's the plan now uh let's see what else has happened in may this is what is in the sale oh that just came up there that wasn't up there this morning uh, so that's a plow but we don't really need that plow it's a three and a half meter plow but we already have the subsoilers that i think are three meters or something and there's also a forage harvester which is definitely not something we need right now and look how expensive that thing is at 45 percent off yowzers okay so nothing on sale that we're interested in <coughs> um let's take a look at the ledger here i did a few uh a a few uh fertilizer contracts not a whole lot but a few um so we haven't purchased anything in may Property maintenance is 416. Production cost is 19. I think this really needs to be quite a bit higher, actually, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, and we made a gross, we grossed almost $15,000 off the contracts. Profited 14,530, but that's actually not accurate because we used our own fertilizer <clears throat> to do that. I used probably maybe two thirds of a, a hopper of fertilizer. 
Um, and I think it's about $6,000. So we really need to subtract about another 4000 off of here. So we've made about ten five ish uh, this month in May. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to cut my hay. Uh, it's at the first stage of harvesting, but we're going to wait till the second stage of harvesting, that, and which means we're going to cut it next month in June. Uh, so that's that. And I think that's really about all I have to update you guys on as far as, you know, making money goes anyways. We did... Uh, fill the greenhouses back up with water. I need to get the chicken some food. But if I'm going to move the chicken coop, um, we might hold off on the food until we get them moved. In fact, can I even take the grain back out of here? Hmm. I'd have to bring the trailer over here and see if I could fill the fill it up. That could be interesting. I don't, I don't think I want to, even if I did decide to get rid of the Colts, you know what? I'm not going to get rid of the Colts. It is just really cool. <laughs> this is the most awesome building ever. Even if we end up not really using it, we're, we're going to simulate using it. So it's going to stay here. Okay. So I made that. I decided that. Um, okay. Well, hey, anyway, I'm going to try and move this lettuce in there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stack it six high. I'm just going to keep it three high and move the lettuce in directly as it is. And hopefully I can get it in there without things borking out on us. And then um, moving forward, starting in June, we're going to have to start using that new warehouse. I I, I just I, I don't think we have a choice because it's just going to get worse and worse, like I said. Uh, all right. Anyway, um, so, yeah, I will bring you guys back in June with an update and we'll go from there. So see you next month. All right, guys, welcome to June. Uh, it is actually only June 1st because there is a lot of stuff that has to happen uh, in this month. So I'm bringing back on the 1st rather than on the 3rd. So let's start with contracts. We have hit the jackpot, you guys, with contracts here. Um, we've got two $12,000 contracts. They're all barley. Um, and a couple of smaller ones. And uh, what that means, of course, is not only are we going to make, you know, $26,000, $27,000 just from the contract alone, uh, but that's going to give us a lot of extra barley uh, for chicken food. Okay, so we got that going on. And I also did not... Yeah, I didn't borrow their equipment for those, but we don't need to. We'll, we'll use our own combine and our own equipment. We got a nice big trailer. We got, yeah, that'll just save us some money. Um, anyway, um, so we got that going on. Uh, we're going to use uh, Delbert's Demolition and Construction Service to move our chicken coop uh, probably over to that spot on the other side of the barn that I was talking about. So that's going to happen. But I'm going to wait until uh, probably tomorrow uh, to do that. Uh, we have one more day's worth of grain here uh, because I couldn't figure out a way to get the grain out of the chicken coop. I, I hooked up to our little Brantner trailer over there and drove over there, and there's no option to, you know, to fill the trailer from that silo. Um, so we're just going to have to let the food run out, and, you know, if, if there's a little bit of time passes where they don't have any food, uh, all that really actually does in this game is it means they stop producing eggs, but it doesn't, like, kill the chickens or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we'll wait until June 2nd before we move this and then put in that new warehouse that I, that I showed you, uh, back in uh, May, because I think we need to do that. Now I did, I was able to get the rest of the, uh, lettuce in here. Uh, but as you can see, I didn't, I didn't stack it, double stack it. I just brought it in as is, and it seemed to be okay. So, but I think, you know, we're, we're only in June. And we haven't even put, you know, June's produce in here yet. And I think we just need to, you know, move to that other warehouse. But I am going to keep this cold storage building here. And what I might do, what I might do next year is I might store some of the stuff in here. Uh, but just bring it in as three high pallets and not bother with stacking. Because that will probably help make everything, you know, in general more stable. But we're gonna we're gonna get that other warehouse too because I think that's really just the best solution for us, you know, game performance wise. Okay, uh, so we'll turn that. Uh, wait, was that off? Yeah, or on? I don't know. 
Okay, let's close that door. Okay, so, but for today, um, we, my plan for today is to cut my hay and then do those harvesting contracts. Uh, because we're going to need the money from those harvesting contracts to to get that new warehouse and pay uh, Delbert's demolition and construction service. And also, finally, buy the Pottinger mower. I am tired of waiting for that dang thing to come up on the sale. So we're just going to buy it. And if after we do the barley harvest, we still don't have enough money to do everything, I might have to take just a little quick loan out from the bank. And I'm not worried about that. Hope you guys aren't either because we've got so much money sitting in that building right now. You guys, it's ridiculous. It is just, it's mind-blowing to think about how much money's in there in addition to all the silage we're going to have. <laughs> January is going to be a big month. It is quite possible that we might make a million, you know, hit a million dollars in January with everything we can't have. Quite possible. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe not, but it'll be close. Uh, all right. So that means that we're going to go here. Uh, oh, by the way, this is what is up for sale. Uh, I already have this Russell Mosh uh, cultivator. Mine's quite a bit older. Therefore, uh, if I sold it, uh, it's not over $38,000. So we would take a loss there. We don't need to do that anyways. Um, that same plow is still there. I think that's the same plow. There's a case, uh, Steiger quadra, uh, quadra track, which is way out of our range. There's a disc harrow and that same exact Fantech, um, uh, tenor. I came back up for sale, but I already have this, so we don't need that. So nothing in the sales. So we are just going to flat out buy the Pottinger mower that I've been wanting for so long. And if it does happen to come up on sale later... And we can sell the newer one and buy the older one to make a little profit. We will. If not, well, then it doesn't. Okay, so let's go to mowers. And because I'm tired of leasing this thing, man. I'm tired of leasing this thing. We're going to own it. Now, maybe someday this uh, Kong Skilled will also come up for sale. Um, this mower here can be set up with. A collector, which I believe is just, you know, makes it uh, windrow. Okay. Wow, that's another fifteen thousand dollars. This sucker is expensive. Man, oh man, how much is the how much is the crone mower? Just straight up the crone mower. It's thir three hundred and eighty thousand. <laughs> hmm. We're gonna own this someday, you guys. We will own it someday <laughs> before this series is over, one way or the other. I'm going to own this mower, but wow. Yeah, that's expensive. Okay. Well, anyway, um, we're just going to get the Pottinger uh, for now. So let's go back to here. And we're going to continue using our, our Coon front mower because it works just fine. No reason not to, but this, we're going to buy this. Uh, there aren't any configurations that we can get with it. So we're just going to straight up buy it as is. And we now finally own the Pottinger wind rowing rear mower. Okay. That was going to happen one way or the other. In spite of everything else we need to do, I made up my mind <laughs> that this was going to happen. So it happened. So this belongs to us. No more leasing. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's hop in our tractor here. All of my tractors should be in very good condition. And um, we actually need, let's go ahead and, and fuel this guy up though. He's kind of low on fuel, so let's do that. And then we'll get started uh, cutting our hay here. Yeah, so lots of stuff happening this month, man. Those harvesting contracts are gonna gonna take some time. In fact, you know, I'm almost I'm almost tempted to to actually cancel these two field seventy six. Well, no, I don't think I will because they're right next to each other. Yeah, since they're right next to each other, uh, I mean, you know, that's gonna be another three thirty two hundred bucks for us. We're not really gonna get. Wow, 707 bucks to fill this thing up. Is the game simulating today's actual gas prices? 
Oh man, if it was, it'd be a lot more than that, huh? Uh, anyway, um, we probably won't really get enough barley from those two fields to make it worthwhile to keep the barley itself. But, you know, we'll do it. We'll, we'll make it happen. Um, but our first focus right now, like I said, is to get our hay cut. So, oh, I guess, is that the right side? Yeah, that's the right side. Actually, hold on. Before we hook up to this, let's get our front mower first. Yeah, we've had this little coon front mower almost from day one. And it's still in really good condition and still gets the job done. So there's no point in buying the Pottinger front end mower when we have this. Now, if the Pottinger front end mower, the one that goes with this back mower, comes on sale, we might consider doing that at some point. I don't know, though. I mean, I don't think the Pottinger front end mower does anything different than what this one does. We'll see, though. It just depends on how much, you know, how much it is and that sort of thing, I suppose. I'm so happy that we now finally own this rear mower, though. I've been wanting this for such a long time, and the game has just not cooperated with us, uh, you know, in terms of putting it up for sale. So we just flat out had to buy the thing. The good, the good thing about that, though, is because it is brand new, it's going to last a lot longer. We're not going to have to repair it as often and, you know, that sort of thing. So... There's pros and cons to it all. Okay, I'm actually going to start um, here. No. No, I'm not. I'm going to start like I usually do. We do like a little headland up here first. You go down, and you go down. And here we go. All right, you guys. Well... I'm going to uh, cut my hay and do the usual bit with that, and then I will bring you guys back on June the 2nd, and we'll we'll get uh, Delbert's Demolition and Construction Service coming out here, and we'll get that new warehouse set up, the chicken, uh, chicken coop move, that sort of thing. And, uh, oh, actually, no, hold on. We got to do the barley harvest first so I can get the money for that. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll probably bring you back uh, somewhere in the middle of the barley harvest just with a, a quick update, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'll see you guys in a while. Let's cut some hay. Yes, I forgot to set my new mower to wind rowing mode, but it's, <laughs> it's set to wind rowing mode now. Oh, for goodness sakes. Can't take me anywhere, man. That's better. All right. I'll see you guys in a while. All right, guys. Uh, I'm just back with a quick update. I just finished the, the hay. Uh, and we got over three full stacks around bales. Uh, last time, I got two... Just a little shy of three, I think. So... Yeah, this, uh, waiting for the second stage uh, of the grass makes a huge difference in yield, like a whole mess more. So that's really cool uh, to see. Uh, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to knock out these harvest contracts. I want to get those done now so I have the money from them to uh do this you know get this new warehouse and we're gonna have to do a little bit of landscaping and stuff like that uh to get it going here uh so <clears throat> let's go ahead and get geared up for that we're gonna want our our header trailer so we have to pull that out and we're gonna take the the man truck and our big our big trailer uh well at least yeah at least to the big fields we'll take the big trailer I don't know, we'll see how it goes with the little stuff. The thing is, is I don't want to really mix up the grain from each field. So I don't know, maybe we should actually take the smaller tra trailer. <clears throat> uh, at least to, yeah, we'll take the smaller tra trailer at least to the smaller fields. And then... Uh, We will, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll assess whether or not we want to use the bigger trailer at the larger fields. Okay, so let's get a get this guy going here. Oh, 
Okay, so where are these fields at? We've got 68, 70, 76, and 77. So those are the two little ones. And those are going to be over here, these two fields. And then we have these two huge fields. Man, we are <laughs> we're going to get a lot of grain from those two fields, you guys. That's going to be amazing. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and send this driver over to uh why don't you excuse, <coughs> excuse me why don't you just stage right here okay we get that over there uh we got to get the header trailer pulled out Okay, let's park the header trailer right along here. That is so cool looking. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we're in swath mode. I didn't even think to check that. Um, are these going to the same place? if they are i'm just gonna do both fields all at once uh that's going to grain mill and grain mill all of them are going up to the north grain mill that's ah, too bad they're not going to the south grain mill but at least they are all going to the same place so all right guys well i will bring you back uh, with an update here in a little bit to see how we are doing all right let's get our first load here i have a uh, my uh, New Holland on the way over here with our balers. Uh, what I'm going to do is get started with the baling while the worker continues harvesting the crops and see if we can make the most efficient use of our time and then I'll send uh, these guys up, or, or the guy in the truck up to deliver the grain. I like harvesting, man. It's fun. I don't do a lot of it. I mostly mostly do hay and pallets, you know, lately. Not not that I'm complaining. I mean, we make a lot of money off that. I'm I'm fine with that, but it's just nice to do something a little different every now and then, you know. But more importantly, we are going to get a whole mess of barley for the chickens, so that's the cool part about it. Okay, so that didn't quite fill us up halfway. Shouldn't be driving over these crops, but it's not going to actually hurt them, so. Okay, let's get the worker turned back around and continuing on here, and then I'll start doing the bathing, like I said. Yikes. We'll get him turn around going the other way. All right, go to it, man. Looks like our tractor's here. 
All right, this will be our first time trying out our big M Crone square baler here. Uh, we want these bales set to maximum weight or size, rather. Sorry. Uh, so that's 240 centimeters. Oops. Okay. So between the foot, these four fields, yeah, we'll we'll get a nice little amount of straw. It's really nice that we have that silage additive tank on here too when the time comes. Look at that butte. It's only 10 months old when we bought it, so it's practically brand new. Love it. All right, guys. Um, bring you back with an update in a little while. All right, our combine is just about full. We should get uh, pretty much a full trailer out of this one. Yeah, looks like he's completely full. I was trying to catch him before he completely filled up because then he'd keep moving, but that's all right. Oh, looks like maybe he is going to go. There's a, I might have told this to you guys before, but there, there's actually a mod that allows you to match their speed, but... Wow, look at that, man. Almost a full trailer off of just this one field, though we did do a little strip on that first field, too. All right, well, that's it for this field. We're only 93%, though. Um, what should we do here? Yeah, why don't we why don't we go ahead and just send this up to the mill? And we want you to go to the grain mill. Yep, grain mill right there. And we want we do want you to loop and your loading position is going to be Uh, let's have you park there. All right, go to it there. I was supposed to name, name these workers. In fact, there's a mod that allows you to do that too. <laughs> um, we might do that at some point just for... Add a little extra flavor to the game, you know? Uh, all right, we better do a headland first before we turn the AI loose on this field. We kind of already got the headland here, I suppose. And we might actually not... Whoops, don't drive in the crops. We might not need to do it on that side. But this isn't straight here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just kind of do this strip. I really wish they wouldn't turn my lights off. Okay, so we are pointing at 80 degrees exactly. Well, we were. Oh, nice. The header's uh, acting funny on us here. That's because this header's a little bit too large for this combine, but it works. I mean, it just sometimes does little wonky stuff like that. It's because we're not on a, you know, we're, we're kind of at a, a slant here. Which is all the more reason why I probably need to at least do this part before I have the worker do it.
All right, well, anyway, I'll bring you back with another update in a bit. All right, guys, we're done uh, with these two barley fields. I'm just waiting for the second load to get dropped off at the grain mill and then come back. There's about 73% or so left in the combine. And uh, then we will move the combine over to the next field. I already got the header uh, staged on the trailer. Uh, but I'm going to move the baler over to the next field right now. And then we'll probably pop up and see uh, what, how, how the uh, delivery is going. Maybe finish it ourselves. I'm thinking, though, here, let's look at something real quick. Um, okay, so it shows 77 completed. If 76, <clears throat> excuse me, can also complete, <clears throat> excuse me, then we can, um, you know, maybe get a little bit of, of that, the rest of the grain from those two. A lot of times, though, when you do multiple contracts of the same product and they're all being delivered to the same place, they don't always you know, complete in the order that you do them in, so to speak. Oh, look at all that grain waiting for us. This field and the, and the big one over yonder there too. Oh, this is great. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. Yes, indeed. Okay, we're gonna need to put you someplace out of the way. Here, why don't we just park you over here for now? Okay. And let's see how our guy's doing here. Oh, you're on the way back. Nice. Okay. Whoa. That was weird. <laughs> when I kicked the worker out, my truck like lurched way off to the left there. So yeah, let's get the rest of this grain. And if we can complete, well, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll probably wait till the very end before we pick up the bales and what I might do is grab the low loader and um, hire my my part-time worker pay my part-time worker to help me come out and load these meaning that we'll use the auto pallet because I it, it's just a little bit much for me to do you know with the bale forks and I really don't want to spend almost five thousand dollars leasing the, the square bale pickup so that's what I think we'll do. So instead, I'll pay my part-time worker an extra hundred dollars to come out and help me, you know, load these bales up. I'm sure he'll be he'll be happy to do that. An extra hundred bucks, man, just to throw some straw, some light straw bales around. Well, they're, <laughs> they're probably not that light, but lighter than hay anyway. Now we're gonna use. We're going to use the big trailer on these on the big fields. We might actually use this one too and have the um yeah, maybe hook up hook the McCormick up to the smaller trailer and just get and run them both. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea actually, now that I think about it. Okay, yeah, so we'll just wait till the very end and then we'll we'll come along with the low loader and and pick all these bales up with the auto, the auto loader thing. I, well, actually, does that work? Oh, you know what? I don't know. That might not actually work on bales. I think it does. Hmm. We'll have to test that, actually. We'll have to test that. Anyway, let's go ahead and send our combine over to the next field. Yeah, I don't know. Um, It just occurred to me that that might not actually work. I don't know. Uh, and let's see, we're going to want to drop off the header trailer somewhere, uh, probably somewhere along here. So why don't you just stage yourself there for now? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to run this up to the mill and see if we can finish 76 and get some of the the grain from it uh we need to go this way yeah i know shouldn't be driving over the crops okay we are at the mill i think i'm gonna use the the grain door just so 
we can stop stop this a little quicker in case uh, that other uh, contract finishes because then we can keep the rest of this little batch of grain. Nope, only 13%. Okay, that's fine. I kind of expected that that that's what was going to happen anyway, so. So 76, yeah, I was only counting as 80% done. I kind of, yeah, I don't know. I kind of wish there was some way that they could, um, you know, differentiate each field and not combine them like that. But on the, on the other hand, it's kind of con convenient that they do that too. So it's good, good and bad, I suppose. Okay, let's see. I want to take, I want you to go back to the base. Uh, back to the base, back to the farm. And uh, I'm going to have you get the large trailer, and then I'll probably have the McCormick bring out the small trailer. Okay, so set destination. And you can just pull in the driveway and wait for me when I get there. Okay, let's get this going. Um, now, the last time I did this field, I did not do a headland. And then I had, you know, to come along later and fix it, which wasn't a big deal, but uh, we should probably do a headland this time around. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do the headland before I turn the worker loose on this field. Uh, but also, guys, I have a feeling like we are probably out of time and have been for a while. <laughs> So I'm going to let you guys go here, and then what we'll probably do is start the next episode. Oh, maybe somewhere close to me being done with the second field, just so you can kind of see the tail end of it. Um, and, yeah, we'll go from there. So that is the plan, Stan. Oh, I need to hook up the PTO shaft. That might help. There we go. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we will catch you in the next episode. See ya.